Welcome to this brief overview of the New South Lauren Cargo My Account section on the website. Uh, in this video, you'll find out how to view your flights, your flight reports, uh, your cabin layouts, uh, voice packs, sound packs, the user manual, and the technical support section. So, first things first is when you log on to your account, uh, having purchased South Lauren Cargo, you will receive access to this screen which is my account dashboard and it's basically an overview of what you need to do to get started in using the application so the first thing to do is if you have a previous version installed you have to uninstall it from your computer and then download version 1.6 by clicking this link here the download link um, install it wherever you like um, into a folder of your choice that is not the MSFS community folder or the Explain plugins folder because it's a standalone application. Just make sure you've got permission to access the files wherever you install it and all should be good. The next step is to install FSUIPC or XPUIPC if you're using Explain. If you haven't already got it installed, you must likely have, but if you haven't, there's a sort of a, a few links available here so that you can uh, have quick access to getting the installation that you need. The next step is to start self and Cargo from wherever you installed it by clicking slc.exe in the folder and you'll be asked for your registration email address and the serial number that you can get by clicking on this link that will show your serial number. Just enter it into the application and it will be activated and then you're good to go. Start flying, step five. So once you've done all that, you're good to go. And the next step is to view my flights. Now, obviously, if you haven't flown before, you won't have any flights, but this is where they will appear once you have. And as you can see, I've got 350 flights. I like to fly from Newcastle, and I like to fly to Newcastle because I'm from Newcastle, strangely enough, as you may have determined by my accent. Uh, my average landing rate is displayed, which is distinctly average, and I've got a list of all of the different flights that I've done, and each one has a, a my pilot grade my score and uh, the landing rate that I achieved on that flight. If I want to view more details, it's simply a case of clicking on the flight and I can see more detailed information. As you can see, I flew in Airbus A320 with five crew and 124 passengers. And this is the result I got. I got a B, um, roughly an average landing for me. And uh, apparently the passengers thought it was a great flight. Now, then I can go into more detail and see everything that I did correct and everything that I could have done better or things that I failed on and uh, these these ratings are generated throughout the course of your flight and you can turn them on and off if you're not interested in seeing them on the report however if you do turn things off they won't be uh, put towards the maximum possible score you can achieve so as you're accruing pilot points um, it's you only accrue as many as you possibly can so you can make it easier for yourself but that means you won't accrue uh, as many points as you you would necessarily get if everything was enabled and, and you were checked against everything. So the next stage and the main point to this, uh, this video is how to manage your cabin layout. So you simply click on cabin layout and when you start self-loading cargo on the setup screen before you start your flight, you're given a list of uh, aircraft to choose from, which corresponds to this list on this page here. And underneath that list, you have a list of cabin layouts for each specific aircraft. So, for instance, if I click on A320 here, you can see I've got a list of, uh, of aircraft layouts that are used within the self London cargo simulation. Now, a cabin layout, if you're not familiar with it, is used to determine the seat layout, the seat classifications, the number of cabin crew that are on board, the number of and position of toilets, the number of intercoms that are available for the cabin crew to use to communicate with you, uh, the position of cabin galley seats, etc. And it's all sort of dynamically used to create a, a nice immersive atmosphere on in the back of your aircraft and also to control uh, how quickly or how efficiently the cabin crew can serve the passengers and also communicate with you depending on the positions of the seats and the, the intercoms. So each aircraft has a, a, a variation, uh, a number of variations of the layout that it can be associated with it. So, for instance, in this uh, section, you can see we've got a default one. We've got a Scoot Airlines one, British Airways European one, and you can create your own, or you can use ones that other people have created. Now, one of the main goals of this section of the website was to sort of create a hub for cabin layouts because while you were previously able to create your own cabin layouts, and you still can, um, it was basically a case of uploading your cabin layouts to any of the um, simulator download sites like flightsim.2 or avsim or flightsim.com, things like that. And 
obviously there wasn't a central repository for people to look in and a lot of people were confused as to whether they could get cabin layouts uh, from. So I decided to create this hub that everyone could could use to create their own layouts, but at the same time have the ability to share with other people. And to share with other people, once you have created a layout, the easiest thing to do is to just click on install on any of the ones that you see. And if you don't like them or they don't work properly, you can hit remove. And on the subject of them not working uh, correctly, if there is a cabin layout that you're using and there is an issue with it, because they are quite complicated to, uh, to create, um, I can actually log on to this portal and edit it for you to make sure that it does work. And anyone else who's using the same cabin layout file will get the exact same fixes immediately uh, available to them. So it kind of, it stops the back and forth between people having different, uh, different cabin layouts and worse, me having to sort of fix things three, four, five, six times uh, across different emails. So hopefully that will help me support the, uh, the cabin layout generation a lot better as well. And also make it easier for you guys to, uh, to share your creations for each of the individual aircraft when new add-ons come out or you simply want a new um, variation of, uh, of cabin layout for the aircraft that you use, depending on which flight you are flying. So that's it, dead easy. Install and it'll appear in the application. If you don't like it anymore, just click on remove. If you want to create a new one, um, you can, you, for instance, you could open the default one and you can see the layout here um, and you can use that as a template and you can put uh, Steve's new default layout and I can edit it so that maybe this premium seat is uh, known as P07Q I can save changes I can preview it it's in there that's the premium one uh, where did I put it 07Q so you can see my uh, my my seat has been renamed successfully and it also appears in the A320 list now there you go, Steve's new default layout. And all I do is click install and it'll be available for me to select next time I run self-loading cargo. So dead easy. And uh, like I say, everyone gets access to uh, to any of the layouts that are available. And uh, I can fix them easily if there are any issues. So hopefully you'll find that useful. So the next section is the voice pack section. Now, this is uh, th this is where you basically download all the different voice packs for self-loading cargo. And uh, any updates on here will be placed um, as and when they're available. And when I bring the auto updater online, if you allow it, then the, any updates to these voice packs will be downloaded automatically. So you don't have to worry about it anymore if you have them installed. Um, but basically you can see here, we have the English United Kingdom, which comes with the installation. And then we have uh, English United States, for instance, or the German one, Spanish one, and you just download them and install them into your voice packs folder into your installation. Uh, directly wherever sorry wherever self-loading cargo is installed and same with the cabin crew um now if you watched the previous video you might be aware that uh, self-loading cargo not only supports um obviously the english uh, cabin crew it also supports um multiple languages so if you want to create announcements um to your passengers sorry if you want the cabin crew to create announcements to your passengers in multiple voices, you have the ability. So for instance, if you were flying from say Gatwick to Paris, you might want to install the French sound pack, uh, sorry, the French voice pack for the cabin crew and have it set up so that the primary voice of the cabin crew is in English. So that the first part of the announcement that they make to the passengers is in English, but then they repeat that announcement in French as well, just to increase immersion a little bit. The primary voice that you use will always be used on the intercom when the cabin crew are talking to the captain, yourself. Um, but yes, they do have the ability to speak in, in multiple languages when they are making the announcements into the cabin and not communicating directly with you, the captain. So just depending on which, uh, which cabin crew voices you have installed, you can choose which one you want to have as the secondary if that's something that you'd be interested in doing. And uh, you will hear them talk in multiple languages. These will obviously be expanded upon into the future. Um, the ones that I've made available now are based on the uh, the customer, the, the most popular um, number of customers that uh, have purchased self-loading cargo. So if you want to see uh, new cabin crew voices or indeed captain voices for your language, just let me know. I have actually built tooling to um, assist in the creation of these because there are thousands of files in uh, each voice pack and there's, there's basically no way that really that I could feasibly do it by hand. Um, so I've had to create tooling to uh, allow for this, uh, for these to be created. Now the good news is that they can be created within sort of three to four hours instead of days of work. 
um, which is nice. And it also validates the uh, the voice packs to make sure that all sounds that are needed uh, for the version of the application that you're using, they are actually included in the sound in the voice packs. And uh, as I said, when I bring the auto updater online, whichever voice packs you have installed, Southland and Cargo will uh, automatically keep itself up to date and download any new sounds that I upload um, as part of the voice packs. So, but this is where you get them from. Um, again, a nice central hub for you to be able to download things uh, for Southland and Cargo rather than having to troll through the uh, the the alternative websites. You're still free to upload them, um, any that you create to those sites, but at least now I will be able to direct someone directly to a, pos a place where they can download things to enhance their experience with self and cargo. Same thing goes for the Grand Crew voice, but at the moment we just have a base pack. However, that base pack does include quite a few files uh, that cover multiple, uh, multiple regions across the world um, when you are at your departure and arrival uh, airports. But this is where you get them from, and this is where you'll manage which voice packs you have installed. Same with sound packs, but the difference with sound packs is um, I can't obviously distribute any copyrighted material. But if you create your own voice pack, uh, your own sound pack, sorry, you are free to send them to me, and I will I will make them available um, via this page if you are willing to host them somewhere else, or or or, or as I create new sound packs. Um, that are sort of generic. I'll list them here to create a little bit of variation um, on your on your flights. Now the thing with sound packs is mostly they consist of sort of cabin music, but in version 1.6 they also support the pre-recorded announcements that get made on flights. For instance, say Ryanair, when they do the welcome to your destination announcement just after the landing. That's a digital announcement, and Self-Load and Cargo allows you to either play that or have the cabin crew make a dynamic announcement using the cabin crew voice packs. Um, so you have the choice of whether you want the, the cabin crew to make an announcement or for the aircraft to automatically start playing a, a, a sort of a, a marketing message, I guess. And there's multiple, uh, there are multiple ones um, available in the sound packs. There's, um, there's a sort of a pre-boarding one, there's a after takeoff one, there's multiple ones. It's all documented in the user manual, which we're going to go through in a moment. But basically, you have the choice of whether you want to play a digital airline um, announcements as part of the airline sound packs, or have the crew do the uh, dynamic announcements, announcements here, for instance, the destination name, the current temperature, etc. So they will appear here, basically. So the next section would be the user manual, but I'm going to click on support. Now, this this support section is designed to assist me in assisting you. Um, basically, more common questions. The, the number of questions that I get asked via sort of email or on the Discord server, which we'll cover in a moment, um, the amount of times I've had to sort of repeat myself because this wasn't available. Um, this is just going to be such a massive help in allowing people to support themselves. Um, and if there are any queries that sort of crop up um, frequently, I will create obviously an article within this knowledge base section so that anyone else can have it, have the exact same answer to stop me from having to uh, to type out a thousand times. Get what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> basically, this is going to be a knowledge base so that if there are any common issues, come here and look first. And if the problem has been acknowledged, there will be a solution here. And I don't have to field a uh, hundred different emails saying exactly the same thing. Then the, the information's there for anyone to uh, to find. Of course, you can always email if you can't find an answer to an issue. And uh, I will be bringing up the Discord server again. I know a lot of people miss the Discord server and they don't like the fact that it's been turned off. But the simple fact is it gets too busy and it starts becoming a drain on my time, um, especially when questions are asked repeatedly over and over the same thing. It, it just becomes a, an issue because it takes away from the actual development time of the application. Um, I'm happy to bring it back online, but I would prefer it to be sort of an announcements area rather than a general support or general chat, um, simply because it has to serve a purpose. If it, if it doesn't assist in the development of uh, self and cargo, then uh, I'm not really that interested in it. Um, although I, I obviously do respect the fact that people do miss it. And uh, I'm going to bring it back online, but it will be restricted to customers only. You will be required to link your account um, to your Discord 
uh, account to make sure that you have the correct uh, customer role so that I know that I'm talking to someone who is actually sort of invested in this project um, and not just sort of wasting my time to the detriment of everyone. Um, so I, it will be coming back, but again, there is this also th this additional support section, um, which I will most likely point to when I'm answering questions in the Discord server anyway. And uh, with that, if I go back to my account, there is also the user manual, which is now online. Um, so I can, I can keep it updated. I can make changes that affect everyone without having to distribute PDFs and stuff, which was becoming a little bit of a nightmare as well. But everything in the application is now documented. I've gone through the whole, <laughs> I've gone through the, well, everything, you know, how to, how to move the interface around, how to use the toolbar, how to communicate, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and more importantly, how things work and what, why they exist. Um, there is a tutorial for a sample flight about the expectations that the uh, crew have for you to uh, to perform in, diff in the different flight phases. Um, how to get started, how the scoring system works, the flight reports. Here's the sample flight. So we go through the pre-flight, the boarding, the check-in process, etc., all the way through to uh, the the um, the landings and the, the taxi and the gate and how you interact with the uh, the ground crew. So if you get stuck, it's all in the uh, in the user manual. And then we get to the customizing self-loading cargo section. And there here is again where all of the documentation is available for the, the format of the cabin layouts and uh, also the sound packs and voice packs. Now, I have documented entirely every single event and sound and... Uh, as you'll see, if you want to create your own voice pack, I've separated into the captain and cabin crew events, but every single event, for instance here, um, we have, uh, da, 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 da. I'll, I'll find a, an easier one. I'll find a decent example. Uh, there we go, captain bad weather ahead, for instance. This started, uh, this became available in 1.6. In so if I add new events, I'll update the, uh, the the version that it applies to. You can see that the captain is speaking into the cabin, that is the context, and the default script. So if you want to create your own uh, your own voice, uh, self loading Cargo does support multiple files per event. So for instance, in this bad weather ahead event, you might want to create a script that says, ladies and gentlemen, I've turned on the seatbelt sign because we're expecting bad weather up ahead or some variation of that if you want to create multiple files. So the whole thing is documented and it goes even further in the, uh, when we get to it, when we get down to the cabin crew, you can see, for instance, in this one, if the crew are making an announcement for drinks, it tells you that the cabin crew is speaking to the cabin. The volume is affected by the door thickness slider. So self-loading cargo allows you to simulate the door being closed. So if it's closed, it will be muffled to you. Um, so that obviously it creates a more immersive experience. Um, it shows that it will repeat in the second language if you have that turned on, if you have, the, if you have multiple voice packs for the cabin crew installed. And again, the, uh, the context, which is the, uh, the actual sound that, that gets played. Now, this is obviously the default script for that specific event. Um, if you create any files, then you now have a reference um, to what your sound should say. Because if you start putting random sounds into um, different event folders then it's not going to make sense in while you're using the application and again they are all documented everything that you could need even down to the uh, the safety notices etc so you should have no issue in uh, in creating your new voice packs if you want to and again we've got some reference for the uh, passenger type codes and stuff which are going to be more re more relevant as uh, as time goes on into different versions but that is it. This is the uh, documentation. This is how you install cabin layouts and voice packs and uh, view your flight reports. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Thank you very much for uh, your patience and support. And self and Cargo will uh, be with you shortly. Thank you.